Hi, I'm Jessica Alba, and you are watching Movie Phones Unscripted. I'm here with Paul Walker. We are going to do an interview with each other, asking some questions from you and some of our own. I'll start with the first question. Paul, what was it like working with me? <laughs> <laughs> um. Huh? I mean, it's not that hard of a question. No, it is. No, it's not. Uh, because you want to say the right things. Oh, whatever. Without being too cheesy. No, I, I Tell don't the know. truth. What was it like working with me? It was fun. I mean, uh, you know, you never really know what you're going to get into, what the person's really going to be like. And my, on a movie, generally. Yeah. Okay. And the first read on you, I like to think that I'm fairly intuitive. I thought, oh, she's pretty solid. There's a little... Little little uncertainty there for the most part. I'm totally playing with you. No, I just I just you know, four months in one location with somebody, you never know what you're gonna get into. Right. And like every day, yeah, there's certain times where I think, you know, we got on one another's nerves. That's gonna happen. But I look back at it and yeah, I couldn't imagine having to done the movie or doing the movie with somebody else, anybody other than you. Same. I had a really good time and uh no, I'm I'm glad to say that, you know. I got to know you and got to spend that time with you while making that movie. I had a, got a good time. Memories are sweet memories, and like you'll always be a friend of mine. And you know, and that's I love that about it. Oh, that's real nice. That was a good answer, Paul. Sweet. <laughs> okay, this is from Evan Rachel's from Columbia, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult shooting a movie that takes place mostly underwater? Um. Absolutely. Uh, shooting a movie on location anywhere is difficult, Evan, um, but particularly under the water because it was, you know, in the 70s, arranging from 70 to 75 degrees, which is below um, your body temperature. So we got cold uh, and started shivering right away after about 10 minutes. And uh, we had to be underwater acting 45 minute time periods at a time. And uh, that's never easy. And also, when I put my mask on, my lips are already big, but I looked uh, very silly with the mask on. I look sort of like a, a parrotfish, which are the fish with the big blue lips. Um, so I felt like an idiot under the water most scenes when I had the mask on. And everyone else just looked really nice with big, full lips. Oh, so <laughs> That was my own insecurity. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> All right. Unscripted question. What mark do you plan on making on film in your career? Or do you plan on not making a mark? I don't know. I don't think that you can really plan something like that. I think it sounds almost self-righteous, too, to even think really? that maybe you would make a mark. I think you just, like anything, like I go into it, and I want every experience to be the best it can possibly be. And I do the best work that I can possibly do. And with each and every passing movie that I'm in, I feel like I'm getting better, I'm improving, and I like that about it because I'm super competitive with myself. And, you know, I like that there's always room to grow, and, you know, and, you know, I think really all I can hope is that, you know, like, I love nothing more than when people come up to me on the streets and they're like, like, especially the little kids, and they're like, dude, I love Fast and the Furious or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, that feels really good. I mean, it wasn't that long ago where I was a little kid, and I remember going to Star Wars, you know, the very first one, and thinking that was the coolest thing. Like, that was all time. I ran home, I got my lightsaber, and nowadays it's like, I don't know, to even know that there may be one or two people that look at you and the way that I looked at Luke Skywalker, and I think that, man, that guy's really cool, or I'd really like to do what he does. Um, I like that. So you're just, like, sort of living your childhood dream. Yeah. <laughs> This is from Big, Big Rats Girl, 11. Yeah. What tips do you have for people who want to be an actress? My tips for anyone who wants to be an actress or actor, Big Brats, which I think you're referring to those dolls that have big lips and big eyes, which I like. They're like the modified Barbie doll. Um, I like kids' things, so I know about kids' right, stuff. <laughs> Your daughter should actually get some Brats. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, if, to be an actress or an actor, don't do it if you have any other option. If you really feel like that's the only thing for you and you can dedicate everything to it, do it because there's a lot of, um, it's, it's, it's not the easiest job in the world to do. And uh, the people around you who love you aren't gonna be incredibly supportive of it. You really have to believe in it and wanna do it yourself, um, especially as an adult. Um, so yeah, if you have any other options, 
do the other options. If you don't, then uh, then acting's meant for you. Sweet. Ronnie Carlson from Van Nuys, California, not far from here. How did you get your six pack, Paul? I laugh a lot. <laughs> you do laugh a lot. How did you get your washboard stomach, Paul? <laughs> um, I don't know if Ronnie's a guy or a girl. Yeah, me either. I don't know. I just just uh, sit ups. No, I'm just lucky. You're just lucky. Yeah. yeah, he's genetically blessed. And I'm active. Play a lot of sports. I think that helps. Yeah. You know, surfing and stuff. Yeah, but I've always just been lean, and that's just luck of the draw. Lean, mean fighting machine. That's right. <laughs> wow. Another unscripted question. Um, there were several times while we were out there working where you said that you were just done. <laughs> you wanted to get out of there so bad. so bad. No, but really, but really, it always got me because, like, sometimes you get out, you like being contrary. You like stirring the pot a little. No, it's, no, no, it's come on, okay, hear this okay, out. Okay, it's in your personality. So, right, okay. And uh, you would say it, and half the time I believed it. And then the other half, I just was like, you know what? She doesn't really feel that way. She's just saying it. Yeah. I mean, four months is a long time to be away from home no matter where you're at. It wasn't even that. It's just being where we were. And the elements. Yeah. And I know that you and John were, like, super peachy the whole time. <laughs> I think everyone and John was super peachy no, the whole really, time. No, but really, but really, like, when you look back at it, do you look at it and go, I'm so glad I did that? Like, yeah. that was a great experience? Or do you look back at it and go, that was hell? No. I mean, it was hell, um, but it was a great experience. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you got to spin it. Just pick one and go with it, you know? Like, which one is it? It can't be both. It is absolutely both. Life is complicated. It was hell, but it layered. was unreal. Like, you wouldn't trade it for anything. I would never trade it for anything, and I would never trade that experience for anything. And I learned a lot, and I learned about free diving, which is one of my favorite things in the world. And I got to spend and bond with actors in a way that you just don't get to do in our business. People are so sheltered. Mm -hmm. Everyone goes to their trailers. Everybody's so divided. Everybody has a posse and entourage, especially the more successful you get. And we were really... It was like camp. We were really thrown together and spent day and night with each other. And we mm -hmm. became, uh, in the most sense that I've ever felt on any set, a family. And so I absolutely appreciate that. And I appreciate that we all got to sort of rely on each other. And when it was cold and it was, when it was hard is sort of when you get to see um, who people really are. And everyone really was good people that we got to yeah. work with. No, that's so true. I There's... would never trade that, but it was hell. Yeah. <laughs> I was cold. No, I don't given like the being circumstances, cold. <laughs> the situation, there is no masking. Like it, it wore off real quick. You I know? was cold. <laughs> people come in with their game face on, you know, and it's yeah. like, it, it doesn't it, last so long. No. So, Dad's Sunshine Girl to Paul, what's the most difficult part of being famous? Probably answering questions like that. <laughs> it's no, like, it's what the, not. No, What's but the it is. most difficult part of being famous? What, how about when you were an actor? I don't, I don't know. I really, is it difficult, Jessica? It's not really difficult. What's the most I think difficult the hardest... part for you? Don't ask me. What's the most difficult part for Paul to be famous? You know, I think you just, you got, I think the hardest part, this is it. The hardest part is when you're out to dinner with your girlfriend and people come up to you, they rush you. It's like the one time where it's like, hey, look, you know what? You want to be alone. Like, that's hard. Outside of that, I mean, it's it's pretty basic. I mean, people so talk about it. Personal time with you and your yeah. family or people that you love. And it seems it seems to me it's not like you know people like approach all the time, but when it does happen, there are those few moments where it's like, oh okay. But you know, you never want to be rude. You always want to no, be nice. You, and you always want to be accommodating. Be but yeah, it's it's. I mean, but it's, it's distracting it's, taking pictures in the middle of a restaurant at ten o'clock at night when you're with having an intimate. Dinner. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, that's all I can cry about. You know what I mean? It's not a bad thing. She just no. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is, you're asking me the heart. That's that's it. That's what is the hardest thing? That would be it. I mean, it's it's not hard. That's fair. You just you just kind of you just kind of roll with it, and I think you just you know you you play it for what it is. I mean, you don't get caught up in your head and your game, and you don't allow all the hype to balloon your head, and no. you try to stay grounded, and you hang around with the people that you know you've always known, and you know you stick with the things that you've always done, and and in that you just you kind of find base in a reality and. You know, my buddies, man, I'll, t I'll tell you that. My dad, my brothers, any one of them, if I were to step out of line, they'd kick the crap out of me, you know? So, <laughs> I met I your dad, and too, yeah, you know? <laughs> probably but, uh, <laughs> My yeah. family's pretty much the same way. Uh, yeah. No, I got that about your family, yeah. for sure. All right, this is from uh, Marauders Girl 623. What would you say is your biggest achievement thus far? What would I say is my biggest achievement thus far? 
Um, I think just um, acting for as long as I have. Um, I started acting by choice when I was 12 and, uh, and still um, being employed and not, um, I don't know, sort of persevering and not letting uh, things, uh, distractions in, in the famous side of, of what this business is about. Like they try to put so much, um, the business tries to put so much on what you're wearing and, and, and events and is this high profile and all this weird famous person stuff that I don't care about. And, um, and I think being able to get through it and know that like I really do love acting because I love telling stories. I love touching people. I love, you know, seeing little kids, their faces bright, brighten up when they see you because they can relate to you in some way because you play a character that they love. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why I do what I do for a living. And I think um, just not being uh, jaded and not mm-hmm. allowing this business to, to, to make me jaded and still do it for as long as I have been. Nice. Rochelle Keen from Gap. What kind of training that did this role require? That was the funny thing about this movie. <laughs> we got out there, the camera tests, I'm yeah. gonna put them in quotes right now, the camera tests <laughs> were our training. Right? Were our we, training. Got, we got there a good month before we were supposed to start filming. Right, no wardrobe, yeah. no, no, we had nothing picked no, out. No, but the funny thing is, is that so many of those camera tests, that footage ended up in the movie. In the movie, yeah. of course they did. So training was, uh, it was on the fly. You just, we just kind of picked it up as we went. I mean, but you we, learned how to scuba dive. Yeah, but I mean, I'd scuba before. Oh, you have? Yeah. But you got, we, you like officially got your certification. Certification and all that. And but, then, uh, did you know how to free dive before? No. But so I mean, learned. but I'd snorkeled. I mean, I just hadn't, you know, not the extreme, like, uh, you know, call it skin diving, snorkeling, free diving. They're really all the same thing. Yeah. It's just free diving is just the next level. It's going a little bit deeper and staying down a little bit longer. That's really all it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I guess learning to relax with my breath holds and you know, so that I can get down, say, like that 50, 60 foot barrier. Was it freaky to you at all when they, t- when we would have assisted air, we'd have to go down like 25 feet and we couldn't go above because we could, could possibly get the bends. Like we had to stay right. down. That was right. a little, that was kind of freaky a little bit. Yeah. I think the first couple of times you're talking the free scuba, the free scuba, when you, you'd, you'd hold, you'd hold your breath, you take the hit of air, yeah. hold your breath and then s- uh, I think psychologically, I think it messes That's, with you. Yeah, psychologically, because like we were okay, yeah. but psychologically. Well, you just know. Okay, and wait also a minute, when there's sharks, yeah. that kind of is scary. No, but the ascent thing, it's, it's spooky. Yeah. I mean, you know, they really, they really hit that home when you go through scuba training and, and your certification process that, hey, the last thing you want to do is ascend holding your breath. Right. And we're holding our breath on compressed air. you're on compressed air. And you're like, okay, wait a minute. I just maybe came up say two to three feet yeah. and then you get you right back down. down again you like wonder when the harm's gonna set in yeah like wait are my lungs gonna blow up now yeah or am i gonna cramp yeah and, yeah but uh sorry yeah. that I think, was off I think subject psycholo- i, I think, don't know no, it was a good question though i think psychologically it definitely messed with me the first little while but by the end of it by it the was, end of it we were it fine we've done it so many times <laughs> anyways how did into the blue compare to your previous experiences in making movies uh wow it was completely different pretty much from anything i'd ever done uh, just because it was so physically demanding on a daily basis and uh, we never really knew what we were shooting any day so everything was sort of on the fly I never knew what scene we were shooting the director didn't know what she- scene we were shooting any day mm-hmm. uh, because it, everything was revolved around the weather so if the ocean was murky if it was murky under the water not good visibility or if it was too um, rocky what is it called when it's real rocky uh, just- Turbulent. There's a lot of chop on the water. Yeah, there's a lot of chop on the water. So we couldn't shoot the scenes uh, that we planned for the day, and then we'd have to go on land, and then in the afternoon it would clear. And so I think just not knowing any day for four months what you're supposed to be shooting, and then we would shoot scenes and reshoot scenes and reshoot them, and and so you never sort of know where this movie's going. It was hard to sort of get a grasp on what we were doing, and we all just sort of relied on each other. Uh, and on, on sort of the friendship that we created uh, with all the actors and sort of hope that that chemistry somehow came through because, I mean, I, I didn't know how the movie was going to play, to be honest with you. No, you and never it ended did. up working. It ended up really looking good. Yeah. So, Last one for Paul. Finish this sentence. The three things I love about movies are... Travel meeting new people, 
and the downtime. <laughs> the downtime. <laughs> That's what I love. Yeah, yeah, it's good. All right, this is the last one for you. Finish this sentence. The three things I love about movies are. Um, traveling. Um, playing dress up for a living. And. See, I knew you liked those bathing suits. Whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, experiencing different cultures. Um, I, I've really been able to live in different countries and experience different cultures. And I don't think in any other job I could have had, um, you, you really get to, to dive into that. And it's cool because you understand that it's a big world and that not everything is the same. Mm -hmm. You know, you get real comfortable in the United States, but it's quite different, yeah, even in Canada. It opens your eyes to a lot of stuff. Yeah. That you maybe know that. Eh, I can't, I'm not going to talk. Go. <laughs> Here we go. Do the outro. All right. Thank you to Movie Phone. And thank you for watching and sending your questions. Goodbye.